In this tutorial, we'll be creating this 3D reveal effect that you can do in Element 3D, which is pretty simple. So I'm going to start off with two layers, one being my background and one being my element and a camera. I'm going to import a certain model. This is the one I found to use. I'm just going to scale it up here. And there you go. I'm not going to touch anything else. And I'm going to position my camera however I want to. So let's say something like so. It really depends on what you're using. So, And I'm going to animate it just like this. OK, cool. So this is what I have. So it is important that you finalize the movement of your object and camera so you don't need to move anything around later on because it's going to be pretty difficult. So first thing you want to do after you've done with that, you're going to duplicate the Element 3D layer. Then you're going to pre-compose it, move out attributes, and you want to copy your camera and background into that composition. And I'm going to name this Depth. You're going to go into this Depth composition, down to Output, and on to World Position. Now this is what we're getting. We're basically getting a 3D alpha matte kind of uh, effect here which we're going to customize. So I'm going to spin this the way I need it, like so. And we're going to animate the Z position. So on zero seconds, we're going to set a keyframe for the Z mat here. Go on to like four seconds and animate it forward until we reach the end of it. There you go. OK, so here you can control the expansion, which we don't really need for this one or the feather. This is something you can adjust later on, so we're going to leave it at that. Now we're going to copy all of these layers we just created into the main composition and pre-compose it once again. We're going to call this depth 2, go into it, and here we don't need the word position, we need the original model. So what you're going to do is go into fog, enable fog, set it to white, 100 of opacity and set the fall off to taper. So basically what that does is create sort of a scan or a line that you can animate on top of your object. So we're gonna play around with the settings until we get a certain line we like. As you can see it creates a line around this area. I'm gonna play around with some of these settings like this. Go to frame 0 until it's out of frame. You can change the color to red so it's easier to look at so you know you're still in frame here so i'm gonna go back go to zero seconds animate the starting distance go to around four seconds here and animate it all the way through like so until you don't see any red here this is why i changed it to red color now i'm going to change it back to white and this is what we have so basically it just creates a 3D scan on top of the model we got. Okay, now what you want to do is go to the output here where we changed it to world position before. We're going to go to specular. And as you can see, we are pretty much isolating the model here from black and white. We do have some white left over here from the reflections. So we're going to go to specular right here and set it to zero. Make sure you have a black background here. And our 3D scan is pretty much complete and we can do some cool effects with it. And you can make this line thinner by changing the range here or thicker, but I'm going to go with something like this. Now going back to our main comp, we have these depth 1 and depth 2. What you want to do is duplicate the original layer. I'm going to isolate it here, go into output, and when it shows polygon mode, we're going to change it to point cloud. Now you can barely see it, so you can adjust the point size here to let's say 2. You can play around with some of these colors if you want, but as you can see it creates a point cloud of the model with the same color in that area of the model. Okay, so we're gonna go with this layer we just created and put it under depth number 2 and change this to luma matte depth 2. So basically what we're getting out is this. This 3D cool scan effect with the dots. Now I'm gonna isolate the original layer we have and do the same with the first depth layer we created. 
So what we're getting here is this. So what you want to do is go to our first depth layer, hit U and you'll see the two keyframes we created and you're going to want to push it forward just a few frames like so. So it's basically delaying the animation so we have the dots appear first. Okay, so everything combined we should have something like this. You can see we have the dots appearing first and then the 3D model. Now I think I'm going to take these two keyframes and put them backwards just a bit more and maybe feather our mat. And another thing you should do is take the dots and the second depth layer and put it under the original layers. So it basically doesn't overlap the original model we have. Another thing we can do is add sort of another scan effect with a color here and a glow. So we're going to do this by duplicating the second depth layer we have, put it on top here. Going to create an adjustment layer. And we're going to do the luma mat to that third layer, which is our second layer as well. You can go ahead and add your glow. I'm going to go with the default one. Play with the settings until we get something we like. And if you want to add a bit of color, we can go drop some curves here. You can go like green, red, whatever fits your animation better. I'm just going to go with green because it's more technological or whatever. And we can upgrade this by just setting the same adjustment layer to additive. So it just creates a more glowing effect here. Another thing you can do is add a background just to make it more interesting. Make it 3D. I'm going to solo this. And just adjust it the way you want it to fit your composition. Like so. And here I simply animated the opacity once it's all revealed to appear as well. So we get something like this towards the end. Now obviously we didn't even get to the beauty part of the 3D model, so you can go into the original element layer, render settings, turn on ambient occlusion, go into the lighting here, I believe I used dramatic before that, play around with this, but this is all depending on how your scene looks and the kind of light you have and what you want to achieve. And all I did here is add a vignette and some curves adjustments, along with these black bars, just to give it a better look. And this is how you create this type of effect. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something useful, and we can use this in your next projects.